So hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be dealing with the big secret. Something that someone brought to my attention back at the end of 2018. And I thought I would put this to the test and really take the opportunity to try and find something that maybe some of you know about and some of us don't know about. So without further ado, let's take a little look at what the hell I'm on about. So, during this community event, which happened towards the end of December last year, it was brought to my attention by a fellow sim racer that using the manual shifter would offer someone uh, a slight advantage due to the immediate gear change when using a manual shifter as opposed to using the paddle shifts. Well, obviously I'd like to put this to the test and during the event, down the start finish straight, I tried using the manual shifter just to shift up, which by the end of the start finish straight, I always seemed to be maybe a car length ahead. So I thought I'd put this to the proper test and try and get used to using the manual gearbox. So let's, uh, let's see what happened during my test. See if I actually bettered my lap time. So before we get too deep into this video, I just want to state that this is about two identical cars just with different methods of changing gear. Is one faster using a manual gearbox than using the paddle shifts? And it's more to do with the gear changes as opposed to setting a faster lap. So just bear that in mind. It would be very hard to determine this just using the console. So. Just a little pointer before we go any further. So here we are at the historic Monza circuit. Now I've chose this circuit and the Ferrari 330 P4 because I wanted to find a circuit that wasn't too challenging when it comes to gear changes. Obviously this is a new concept that I'm trying to learn, the heel toe technique. And I wanted to try this on a circuit that wasn't going to challenge me too much with lots of gear changes. So I also wanted to choose a car that uses a H pattern gearbox. So nothing too modern, nothing with a sequential gearbox and nothing really that was going to be too taxing or a handful. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into the testing and see where we should start. So here we are part way along uh, through the through the lap and uh, I'm just as you can see I'm just using the two pedals at the moment I'm just using the paddle shifts on the steering wheel the McLaren GT3 wheel and I'm just literally trying to set a banker lap I've set in numerous laps before this just trying to push the car to to a good limit really uh, for starting this process in um, setting a lap using the paddles and then I'm going to try and beat that lap using the manual shifter. Now like I said someone mentioned that the gear shifter should be quicker uh, changing up the gears but the main issue I've got is going to be adapting to the heel and toe method. Uh, not something I'm particularly comfortable with. Uh, I have tried it in the past and not particularly found much pleasure in using it but since someone had mentioned that it could be quicker especially using some of these old cars I thought it's about high time I started to give it a whirl. So once we've got that banker lap in I thought I would come into the car selection menu and just change the livery on the car so that when I'm driving in white you'll know that I've set a lap time using um, manual shifters and when I've set a lap time in the red you'll know that I'm using the paddle shifters. So here we are and it started out really well this is the first lap and I thought brilliant you can really notice the difference and then we start trying to brake where we're having to come down through the gears really 
and um, obviously you can see there's numerous laps even when I'm just using you know both pedals it's not just about the braking method uh, and the heel and toe I'm still running running wide and learning the circuit so it's not all down to uh, bad technique at this stage but I certainly found that I wasn't able to um, sort of apply as much rev as I needed really I was changing down through the gears and I wasn't really revving the car enough it hadn't I hadn't given it enough revs to be able to change to the next gear which was something that um, something I need to just practice really is practice makes perfect then I've not particularly made you know, good headway throughout the whole of the lap uh, but managed to keep with my ghost and then just managed to get a really nice run through this last corner and uh, just managed to get it together and get a good exit really and that was uh, that was the first time I beat my ghost albeit not very, by very much so then we're just going to change cars again and uh, start using the red one and try and set a faster lap using the paddle shifters So if we take a little look at the standard V3 inverted pedals, you can see that the damper is set just behind the brake pedal. Looking from the rear, it's a little bit more obvious. But choosing to move this from the brake pedal across to the uh, accelerator pedal has certainly made a massive difference to where that you can modulate the pedal. I couldn't actually find it in the inverted version, so this is just the standard V3s. And you can see it moves across quite nicely the little holes already in the block that sits behind the accelerator pedal and it moves without any problem really so also looking at the brake pedal and just allowing it to seat a little bit closer or further backwards you can see that by using the other two positioning holes you can just lower it slightly without much modification So with the brake pedal set slightly lower so that we can modulate between braking quite heavily and also blipping the throttle on the right hand side, I wanted to bring the clutch pedal a little bit lower down so it didn't feel like I was arching my foot so much. So just by changing the pedal uh, layout, getting rid of the extension and just using the rubber um, feet rather than the steel ones, this positioned itself quite nicely with the pedals seating much more level and with less strain on the arch or the back of your uh, ankle. So here I am arriving back, having got back into the white one. So we know we're using uh, the manual shifters here. And obviously you can see I've changed my pedal arrangement to try and sort of allow me to um, add more acceleration when I'm braking. So I've tried to get my accelerator pedal much more level with my brake pedal, although it's still slightly set back a little bit. I've also changed the clutch pedal, which you've seen in the earlier video. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is just trying to get a feel for how much, well, you know, the difference in the pedal layout it feels really quite alien initially when I've started driving it, even just using the two pedals on their own. Uh, the, the brake pedal's in a different position. I've slightly dropped my seat back a little bit uh, just to allow for um, sort of applying the brake and accelerating while still turning the wheel as well. That seems to be a little bit of a, a tricky situation. So yeah, I thought I'd just try a few laps and try and get used to the pedals just using the two pedals. Uh, just, just take myself back to a comfort zone where I feel it just feels natural and try and get used to using the brake in a different position. I think I probably dropped it probably about half an inch maybe, uh, which doesn't sound quite a lot, but when the pedal's in a different position to what you're used to, it, it still feels totally alien.
So after running a good few laps and really getting used to how things are feeling, I thought it was about time I started to use the, 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 uh, the three pedals. And um, like I said, I've spent quite a while and the ghost that I'm chasing is, is the one that I set with the paddles. And you might remember back to the first portion of the video uh, where I was jumping back and forward. I probably did that about, I'd probably say about five or six times before I was happy with the lap that I'd set with the paddles. It seemed quite hard to beat and uh, it was quite comfortable. So this was the one that I'm chasing now. It probably doesn't seem um, as quick as it, or as slow as it was in the previous section of the video. Uh, so we're chasing a 31.12, I think. Um, so yeah, I was quite happy with the lap that I set in the red, in the red Ferrari. Uh, so trying to chase that down with the white one using the manual um, is, is proving quite a challenge, to be honest. So as you can see, one of the methods that I've started to try and adopt, um, because this is pretty new to me, is to try and get all of my braking done in a straight line, get all my gear changes done whilst in a straight line, and then start thinking about turning. Uh, I seem to be finding it quite difficult to be changing any gears and blipping the throttle whilst I've got the wheel turned. Uh, so just try and focus on getting the steering done and then, um, then focus on the corner. <laughs> So the next corner coming up seemed to be quite an issue every single time I kept coming to this corner even though it's still just using the two pedals I just kept clipping that wall and really ruining the lap uh, but I've managed to stay fairly close to him on this one and starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with changing gears now and uh, hopefully I'll be uh, pushing, pushing him right to the line on this one. So here you join me after doing a number of laps now, really getting used to it and really getting a nice feel for sort of just the fluidity of moving between gears and just just the whole concept of it. It's just really starting to sink in now. And it starts to feel a little bit more natural. If, if you just try and relax with it a little bit more as well, um, certainly it's certainly going to take a lot more practice. But whether it is any any faster, I'm really not sure at this stage. It certainly feel I certainly feel like I'm changing gear quicker, um, but whether that's evident, I don't know if there is any exact figures out there, and it's very hard to try and prove or disprove whether it's quicker to change gear using a manual or a paddle shift. But I, I re definitely definitely think that if you're using a H pattern gearbox, it would be worthwhile just for the immersion to try and use it like this and if you're using the sequential boxes I'd certainly recommend using the paddle shifts um, but certainly as a, a sense of immersion and I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the video to be honest it's uh, certainly been an awakening really into getting back in that manual manual uh, shifting mechanism So I'm pretty happy with how that lap went and managed to take two hundredths or two tenths off my personal best lap time set with my paddles. So going back to using the manual shifters, I managed to finally beat it. Whether I could beat that time again using the paddle shifters, I probably could. Uh, but I've certainly enjoyed doing this and the whole approach to learning the new, uh, the, learning a new skill really. But it certainly takes some uh, some doing. I wouldn't expect anyone to be able to just do it naturally, uh, just jumping in and learning a, learning a whole new skill, you know, just off the bat. So if you think it's going to be, you know, an easy ride, uh, I'd certainly, certainly look at adjusting um, the pedals that you're using, possibly even your seating position, and just, just remembering it's a new skill that you're going to be learning, and it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to. So you know remember to walk before you can run 
try a few uh, test runs in just braking in a straight line and coming down through the gears. And uh, remember, you can switch between using, you know, if you're going to stay in one gear through the corner, you know, just use, use your left foot braking. You don't have to use the right foot. So just remember, you know, be ver be open to change versatility with the feet. That's the that's the main aim. So thanks for watching guys and remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, ciao for now.